So we talk a lot about the various ways to save for college education, and often the conversation centers around the benefits of a 529 plan. But rarely do we talk about the ways to get out of a 529 plan when we find ourselves stuck in it. Case in point, we have a child or a grandchild. We open a 529 plan for the benefit of that child. We contribute to it diligently over the years. Our family also potentially contributes to it. The fund grows nicely with the growth of the markets. We see and teach our child about the effects of compound interest, and we enjoy the tax deferred aspect of the account. And then what happens? Well, the child decides not to go to college, or decides to get a scholarship, or decides to get drafted into the major leagues out of high school. Whatever it is, life happens. What do we do then? Well, there are options. In fact, the SECURE Act recently introduced an exciting new option that should bolster the 529 plan as a valuable option to saving for college. That is, we can now turn those unused education funds into retirement funds. Before we get there though, let's talk about the traditional ways to get out of a 529 plan when the funds aren't used for qualified education expenses. The first option is to simply take the money out. With that, we'll owe federal income taxes and a 10% penalty on the taxable portion. Said differently, the gains in the account, and they could be significant, especially if we spent 18 years saving, will be taxed and penalized. Now, we may be okay with that if our goal is to simply get the money out and bite the bullet, but there may also be less expensive ways to unwind an unused 529 plan. The second option is to change the beneficiary to an eligible family member. This could be a sibling or what is a pretty healthy list of essentially extended family members. This could be a convenient option if it's convenient. So we've often set this account up for the benefit of a specific child and we want those funds to be used for just that purpose, for that child. That's where the new option from the SECURE Act comes into play. Before that though, there are a few more general items to keep in mind. First is that the 529 funds may also be used to fund up to $10,000 of K through 12 private school costs. They can also be used for up to $10,000 to pay student loans for the beneficiary and their siblings. And as a reminder, 529 funds aren't just for four-year colleges. They can also be used for community colleges, technical art or musical schools, vocational and certificate programs, trade schools, and continuing education courses. There are also other exceptions, such as when a child receives a scholarship or the funds are used to support a child with special needs. But back to the problem at hand. The newest option for solving for unused 529 funds is to simply fund the beneficiary's Roth IRA and avoid penalty and taxes altogether. This option was designed to assuage savers' concerns about overfunding 529 plans. Here's how it works. First, there's a lifetime maximum of $35,000 that can be rolled from the 529 to a beneficiary's Roth IRA. Second, annual Roth contribution limits do apply. So with a 2024 limit of $7,000, it would take five years to fully convert the maximum of $35,000. Next is that this rollover can only be done to the beneficiary's Roth and not the owner. And lastly, the 529 account must have been open for at least 15 years and the converted funds in the account for at least five years. Those last two restrictions make taking advantage of this option a long-term play. One strategy is for parents or grandparents to simply open a 529 and at least fund it with $1 to get that 15-year clock running. Overall, this new option potentially gives families an extra sense that they won't pay penalties if the money doesn't end up being used for its intended purpose. But what are the other upsides to a 529 plan? For that, check out this video where we introduce 529s and cover some of their general uses, benefits, and rules. My name is Sean Hockley. Thanks for watching.